lot of ums and uhs and you know asking students to speak in, in complete sentences is not a given even among our brightest students uh, they get kind of comfortable using very informal language and so I think that when when we as adults in their lives use uh, appropriate grammar and try to encourage it not that and believe me I'm a recovering English teacher so I have to fight that urge all the time to correct everybody but uh, it, it's really important and that's what colleges are telling us all the time that students need a lot of reinforcement and remediation in this area because they're just not getting enough practice at it. And teachers have to lead the way in uh, promoting academic vocabulary. So Lisa will talk a little bit about more uh, about the math ships. Can I ask a couple of things about the language? Sure. Um, my understanding is, um, especially for the 11th and 12th grade reading lists, um, they include some really dicey books, including The Bluest Eye by Toni Morrison and Thinking in Cuban by somebody Garcia, that literally depict in graphic uh, format um, sex, bestiality, uh, you know, pedophilia, and kids, you know, 11 to 12th graders are expected to read this in order to pass the standards. Um, comments? I mean, can we as parents opt out of that sort of stuff? Well, I, again, I'll say that we have not adopted those books that you refer to, uh, and there is absolutely no indication that we will. Uh, they all will go through a vetting process. There's a lot of lists out there. There's a lot of recommended lists. There's lists that come from the UC, from community colleges, from the state, uh, especially at the high school level. Districts are given wide latitude in what they adopt. Well, this one's on page 152 of the literacy standard whatever, as you know, um, right. the Lewis Eye and whatever else. I mean, it's just right there. And, uh, okay. Well, again, it read. doesn't mean we are going to adopt it. But it doesn't mean you're not. We I are not. Well, we're, we're not. 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 We're and ultimately, the Board of Education has to put their stamp of approval on it. Well, this district's been working goes. on instituting these standards for two years now. And this is the, you know, these four meetings are the first intelligence process that there's been. So there's a little bit of suspicion there. I understand. And, the, and I guess, uh, you know, being in a big state, uh, you know, there is that feeling of detachment sometimes from Sacramento. I get it. I mean, I, we get mandates from them all the time. And we, you know, we wonder. But... The Common Core was adopted by the State Board of Education. So once that happens, it's it's done. That's the public process. So if people had issues with Common Core, it had to happen really at that level. Now there's a lot we can do at the local level to make it work for us, but when the State Board of Education approves the Common Core, it's not really up for us as a district to say, well, we, we'd rather not do that. Do you know the approval for that state was a two-month process in the months of July and August? of, I think it was 2010, Ten. you know, there was no uh, public vetting yeah. whatsoever. And yeah. It had to be done within 60 days or else. They lose that pot of money. You know, they were trying to get that four, part of that $4.5 billion pie. Yep. And so they're just, you know, now this is our only chance to say, Ew, no, <laughs> this, <Okay>. isn't, <laughs> this isn't a good idea. Um, can I say something? Um, Somebody used to, uh, used to say to me, Gabriela, your mind is like a parachute. If it's not open, doesn't work. So let's try to keep an open mind. Um, I understand there is a lot of people that doesn't agree, but I'm here to learn and then to decide if I agree or not agree. And it's getting very confusing. Time is passing. And and I think this is not like the right place because we're not going to be it's able totally to. It's totally the right the place. Like, if there are going to be condensed information, minute, we need to we be able to respond. We let one person talk at a time. We're not going to one person talk at a time. Here, if we approve or not approve, because it's already approved, so might as well. I just want to learn what it is and then have my opinion. But it's getting very hard um, if we, we don't keep going forward. Okay, thank you for that. Yes. Yeah, I'm with you. Okay. This isn't a denning session right now. We can have that maybe towards the end. Let's go on the first one. Yes. Thank, yeah. thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Um, go, moving into math, um, the shifts are the biggest. Idea is that they're going into depth over fewer concepts. We're looking at going deep, not wide. In the past, kids have just had tons and tons of concepts that we covered, but we didn't necessarily learn it in depth. And as a teacher, 
it's hard with everything that is out there. Um, so we would be spending more time on fewer concepts and being able to go deeper into those concepts. Um, as parents, there are essential standards for the grade levels. I encourage you to find out what those are. I'm sure that you will be given something at back to school night. Um, if you haven't been given some insight to this already, next year when it's in full swing, because that's when it says we have to have this up and running, um, that's when you will get those as well, if you haven't already. Um, definitely have that communication piece with your child's teacher. I think you all know that. Um, the other shift that we have is coherence. The, the coherence. The skills are going across the grades. So, for example, we don't start teaching fractions until third grade, but we teach it really deep in third, fourth, and fifth grade. And then it's really, it's, it's a skill that kids need to know how to do when they get to six, sixth grade, seventh grade, and eighth grade math. And because they have had it in depth for those three years, we're hoping that they have that. Um, granted, there will be some kids that we will need to have um, remediation for. We will have to provide the extra assistance. But the goal is, is that we're teaching it so deep that that will not be the case, um, that they're actually learning it, not just getting it covered in class to go from point A to point B. Um, we will be building on skills year after year, um, so they do get in depth, so then that they can apply those skills as they get higher level of math. Um, it's real important as a parent, you know where your child is struggling so that you can assist them and make sure that they get the help that they do need if they do continue to struggle with a concept. Um, my experience has been teachers will be at parent conferences um, in the elementary grades. They will be telling you about the skills that your child may need some extra help and hopefully giving you strategies in order to to work on those skills with your kids. Um, as you know, you're here tonight, so I would assume that you are an advocate for your child, and I think that's wonderful. Um, I think you need to be an advocate for the skills that they're missing um, so that they, they don't have gaps in their educational learning. Um, and making sure that those skills are being you know, reinforced the following year and they're getting that help. Um, we're looking at fluency with calculations. We're looking at some speed and accuracy. Speed and accuracy doesn't mean uh, being able to do necessarily 100 problems in under a minute, but it means that you can do those problems with that speed and getting the accurate answers as you're going through. I apologize for my having my back to you. Um, can't find this. It was not the room that we had intended on being in, um, so we apologize for that. Um, the As parents, challenge your kids to know and to memorize those facts. This isn't news to you. Um, but it's really, really critical that they do know those ma uh, basic math facts. We also encourage you to um, provide opportunities for your kids to practice application of math um, and those math facts that maybe they're having uh, trouble with, but using, giving them a reason to want to know how to do the facts. So you're applying it to a real life situation. That gives a child a purpose as to, oh, guy, I'm learning this not because my teacher says I have to, but because I'll be able to do this um, <coughs> as we go through life. Um, the fourth shift, as I said earlier, it's, it's a deep understanding. They need to be able to know it, and they need to be able to do it. They need to understand why the math works. They need to be able to talk about why the math works. And they need to be able to prove that they know why, the, how and why that math works. I don't know if, if any of you have had a child who is more advanced in math, and then all of a sudden they come home and say, oh, well, I had to tutor Susie today. Or, you know, Bobby, I had to sit down and I had to explain their homework to them. There's a method to that madness because if a child can truly explain it and teach it to someone else, they have a deep understanding. If they can't explain it, they can get an answer, which is good because we do want the right answer. We do want to know that 2 plus 2 equals 4. But we also need to know why that is the case. And that's really too simple of a problem um, to be using the, that as, a, as an example. But when kids can explain it to somebody else, then they truly have that deeper understanding. So ask your kids to explain things to you. I love with my kids to say why, because they get, they get, it gives them an invitation to argue with you. It's normally not okay, but when they're trying to prove a point, that's okay. And it doesn't have to be argumentative, but they really hopefully um, believe in something and they will be passionate enough and have the skills to prove that to you. Um, and sometimes you go, okay. And they're thinking, wait a minute, all that work for, I don't even get an argument out of you? You know, you open that door. <laughs> um, again, it's getting familiar with the math that your kids do need to know. We do get to a point as adults, we may not be those mathematicians, and we get to a point where we say, honey, I can't help you anymore. We're going to have to find another avenue, and that's okay. Um, hopefully your schools will be able to do that, and hopefully it's um, 
because they get into that higher level math. 